Welcome back, this is Yama Jack, and today we got Gunslinger Suicidal BS Old West. You know what I want? You know what I want? I want... VR MMOs to be, like, a thing. But, like, good ones, you know? There are a couple that are getting kind of close. Yeah, we're talking about VR again, okay? Look, it's, it's like my life right now. Um... I want, uh, I want, I want games in VR. They're like proper MMOs, in, but like in VR, you know. And and they're not really something that's gonna exist because uh, a big part of what makes an MMO so special is the, you know, MMO part. <laughs> and uh, a big part of what uh, makes VR not so great is the like lack of the MM part, you know what I mean? There aren't really that many people that have uh, VR headsets, really, like, in the world. It makes up a very, very, very small subset of the market. Very, very small. Um, growing, but but quite small. So if you're gonna, if you're, if you're, you know, if you're Blizzard, if you're, you know, whoever, right? and you want to make a new game, are you going to make it for VR or are you going to make it for not VR? You're, you're probably going to make it for not VR. And that's for two reasons. It's for two reasons. One, um, well, I guess it's for one reason, but it, it, there's like, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about the one reason, so. It's just, uh, so, like, I don't know. I guess it's kind of whatever. We'll we'll just we'll just talk. Okay, it's for however many reasons there are. You you count. Okay, you decide for yourself how many reasons it ends up being. Okay, um, but uh, so first up is uh, there there just isn't that big of an audience, right? There isn't that big of an audience, and uh, you you can kind of get around that by making it possible for you to play on both VR and on PC. So you can play the, the the MMO on either VR or PC, but that runs into a couple of problems. First and foremost is uh, VR isn't really capable of handling currently like really big areas with lots and lots of details. Like, like you're not making games that are, are, are beautiful in VR. The only reason they look beautiful or the only reason they look so stunning is because of the VR part. On PC, it kind of loses that because you don't get that same, you know, VR experience, right? It's, it's, it's a totally different thing. So you got to kind of uh, work around that by making things a little bit simpler, make things a little bit uh, less crowded and that makes for, at least on PC, just like an objectively inferior product compared to existing MMOs on the market. Um, the other problem that kind of comes up with that is that uh, you're going to end up with, with two different ways of playing the games. Two different ways of playing the game that are vastly different, right? Like, totally, completely different ways of playing the game. One of them is just going to be better, right? One of them will be better. You'll either be better playing in VR where you have a little bit more freedom and uh, a little bit more like physical control over what's happening, uh, or you'll be in uh, like uh, or you'll or you'll you'll have the advantage on on PC, not VR, where you have maybe a little bit more precision, a little bit more consistency, but. Uh, you know, not not as like physically in control of what's literally happening. You know what I mean? Uh, one of one of those would have an advantage over the other in, in the in the game, and and the devs are gonna have to balance for that, and that's gonna end up being like an enormous amount of work. So it's it's like uh, you know, not really totally viable. For there to be uh like a proper VR MMO on the market anytime soon just just because like it's 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 a dumb thing to invest millions billions of dollars into because you're not going to get that back because the customer base just doesn't exist however 
I want it. <laughs> I want it really, really badly. I want it so badly. I want to, but uh, and they, they, there's a couple of uh, ones that actually look pretty promising that I might end up trying out. Uh, like a township tail looks pretty cool. Elysia looks pretty cool. Um, Zenith looked the coolest in my opinion. Um, but I haven't really look, looking at stuff on it. I can't see how I'd be able to play the game right now. Um, looks like it's mostly in alpha and I haven't seen any updates on it in like a long time. They had a Kickstarter for it, but I have no idea what's happening right now. I haven't looked very hard, admittedly, but, uh, you know, regardless. Um, but I might check out, like, a Township Tale, uh, or Elysium. They both look pretty okay. But the main thing for me about VR MMOs, you know, when you see them in games and stuff, right? Like, you got, uh, the classics, basically, right? The classic, you know, VR MMO, uh, games. You know, you got your Sword Art Online, and subsequently uh, Alfheim online and uh, Gungale online and then back to Sword Art online because they're weird uh, and then there's like more stuff whatever uh, you know you got you got all those right but in them what's well I guess Gungale online kind of isn't this but what what really is, and then you got uh, you know you're like log horizons and you know all of these and and what really stands out to me in these games is being something that is like such a draw is the the like open world and the like freedom of it you know what i mean you kind of you kind of feel me there it's not necessarily just the vr experience on its own where you're like able to to walk around and and feel things and touch things and pick them up and taste them and eat them or whatever like that stuff is cool and it's really really cool but mostly for me they just seemed like fun games, you know? Like, they seemed like games that were fun to play. And not just because of the VR stuff, but because they had this this huge open world that, that uh, the characters were able to move around in and explore and tons of things that, that nobody had seen before. And, like, uh, you know, you'd go and you'd find an item or whatever, and you'd make your fancy weapon and, and you know like you know you got Kirito and he has his weapons right and uh, nobody else has those weapons those are his those are unique because his blacks the blacksmith made those out of the materials for him you know they're they're unique they're his um, and that's that's what makes it for me and then you know you got your 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 uh, chefs and your leather workers and all these people who are making things in the game and and those things are unique like that's the part that really gets me about it is i want a game that does that not necessarily it doesn't have to be vr although vr does add a lot to the experience but i want a game where you have that level of freedom and it's not really doable um like can, can you if, if y'all haven't programmed before like just just imagining the thought of, of having to put together a system where players can like design their own weapons and then like somehow manage to make it actually make sense and stuff like it just it, it that's not a task that I want to take on <laughs> um, you know like to, to balance the weapons that that your players made and somehow figure out like a, a way because like okay making it so that your players can create weapons that that that's, that's actually not that bad Okay, that part isn't that bad, right? Like you, you can just give your players the ability to like model things in in the game, basically, and uh, end up with uh, like kind of a you know custom thing, right? Um, that's that's not that bad. That's not that bad. Uh, same with like. Leatherworking, food, carpentry, whatever. Like you can allow people to model things in game. Uh, with food, you can allow them to actually like interact with the food and like cut it and like, you know, like you're 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 gonna end up taking up. It's, it's making it work optim, like making it optimal and like graphically, you know, optimized. That sounds like a pain in the butt, but but just making it exist in the first place, it's not that bad. There are tons of games out on the market where you can put together stupid-looking weapons and. Do whatever you want and then smash people's faces in with it like that's not actually that challenging what is challenging 
is rewarding players for making weapons that at least seem somewhat practical without penalizing creativity, right? And, and writing together the, the list of rules or, or the, the verifier or whatever you got that's going to, you know, review the weapon to figure out, like, what kind of stats it has and what kind of weapon is it and how heavy is it and is this a short sword or a long sword or a katana or a mace or a axe or a this or a that, you know, like that. Like, qualifying, like, classifying it and, and you know, mark, like, uh creating data points for it and stuff like 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 all of that information that you need to have to, to turn it into an actual usable weapon that seems like an absolute beast of a task to do and that's not something that I would want to have to ever touch cuz you you'd have to make sure that it's going to reward making you know weapons that actually would be functional right and and penalize weapons that wouldn't without going so far as to penalize creativity. Like, a lot of weapons in Sword Art Online look cool, right? Like, they look cool and all, but uh, they're not very practical, right? They're not very real-world usable, but because it's a VR game, you don't really have to worry about that. You just have to worry about the durability, but um, you'd, you'd want to make sure that you don't have um, those weapons being penalized. But if somebody just makes, like, a chicken weapon, you wouldn't want to give it, like all of the stats in the world, you know? Go make a difference. You might want to let people make their own chicken weapons and go bash in chickens with their chicken hammer, but, like, that's not a very practical weapon. You have to kind of, like, classify. And then maybe maybe your players come up with a way to to make it work anyway, and that's okay, I think. If, if they're able to work through the system and make things that, uh, as long as your system you know, make things that are they're a little bit stupid, uh, as long as they would reasonably work well, right? Like, you can make a chicken and turn it into, like, a, a chicken head thing, and you smash things with the beak or whatever, and that's that's probably a reasonable weapon. I would say, if I were a game designer, I would say that would be a, an okay weapon. I'd say that I would personally, you know, if a player showed me that, I would classify that under, yes, you can use this weapon. It's weird, but, like, that's a functional hammer, okay? But uh, just, like, having to, to build that, that list of rules and, like, verifiers and stuff, that sounds like an absolute disaster. That sounds like a mess. Um, letting players build their own weapons, not that bad. But then it, you also have to, like, figure out a way to implement that in a way that feels like you're actually, like, being a blacksmith. Well, not necessarily exactly like that. Like, kind of simplify it quite a bit. But, like, I don't know. You wouldn't, you wouldn't want it to come up with, like... Um, just a, a weird, like, blender interface when, when you're hammering on a, on a, like, ingot or something, you know? You'd, you'd want it to be integrated into the game somehow. Which would probably be, like, shapes and, like, stretching and stuff, I think, would be the way that I would do it. Like, I would, I'd probably let you, sh like, stretch the ingot and then, like, punch out holes in the ingot and stuff. And then, uh, that would let you kind of make swords and stuff and, and make cool looking shapes and stuff but not get something that's too absurd uh, and then maybe maybe you'd have like a, a penalty for having uh, too many like ingots like melted together into into one you know like if you start with one ingot and then you uh, just make that one a thing then you might get like a bonus or something instead of having like an ingot stretching it and then like melting an ingot into the face of your chicken to get like a beak out of it. That would be like a penalty. And then uh, just having like one ingot and then stretching it to, to be kind of beak-like might be a, a good way to do it. And you know, if you're going to be building a bigger weapon, then just start with a bigger ingot, you know? Does that makes sense? I don't know. I think I think you can make it work, but it would be, it would be like nobody's done it, to my knowledge, in, in a way that I like. And when you give people that level of freedom, obviously the uniqueness goes away because people are going to, you know, go to YouTube. Uh, how do I make the elucidator? <laughs> you know, like that's that's what's really going to end up happening. But uh, I, I I think that that's fine because you would have some people who would be trying things and and doing stuff. But there would there end up being like you know the the one right weapon, right? There'd be like you know 
follow follow these steps and you make a weapon with like plus 18 attack or something stupid right like that's that's the way that it end up being but you'd be able to you know add in a little bit of flair into your own weapons and add a little bit of flair into you know maybe your your blacksmith has like a signature like you know tail on their weapons or something like that you know like that that kind of an interaction where you can like know that like that person is this person because their weapon looks like this even you know like that's that's what what got me when it was was the uniqueness of the gear and stuff and you can't really necessarily have that like the only reason it works in sword art online is because it's an anime you can't you can't have everybody having unique skills because you have to like make you know uh, 10 million skills that are all unique how do you, how do you even do that how do you how do you even do that? You can't just give some people the unique skills and not let everybody unlock unique skills. So you'd probably end up having to have like you know, 100 or 200 unique skills or whatever, and then have different ways to unlock them. So anybody could unlock those unique skills, but they they'd be very difficult to unlock. But anybody could do it. Anyway, that's that's what I want. I want VR MMOs, but I want them to be like good and they're not there yet i might check out a couple of them though there are a couple of uh of your mmos in existence right now that do look they look like fun they're just not what i want you know that's okay they don't have to be what i want i might try them anyway but that's gonna do it for today so thank you for watching remember to like the video if you like it subscribe to see more in the future comment if you have anything to say i'll see you next time Bye bye